Hi, Jimmy here, back again. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look at something a little bit different from what I normally look at. I've just engaged in a wonderful little project called the Pocket Swap, where we swapped pockets. And it involved lots of people who do YouTube and Instagram, costume related stuff, costume history, costume makers, and various other things to do with historical costume, swapping 18th century style pockets with each other. And I've never made a pocket before, so this was going to be a bit of a challenge. What made it even more of a challenge was I am terrible on a sewing machine, so it was all going to be hand sewn. And what made it even more of a challenge was the person I drew in the pocket swap was Amy. And Amy is a wonderful person, a talented sewer and costumier, and is an expert in making 18th century pockets. Great. No pressure. If you're not familiar with these particular accessories, pockets were essential to women in the 18th century, just as they are now. But instead of making dresses without pockets and having to carry a handbag everywhere, they made separate pockets that you tie around your waist and you then have your pocket under your under your skirt so that you can access stuff and there'd be a slit in the skirt so you could get into the pocket and voila, you have pockets. They're amazing things, we've got loads of them that still exist and I decided that I would take a pattern from one of these original pockets to make one for Amy. So the first thing was to select my fabric and because I am an exceptionally basic man I decided that I would use some striped cotton, some black and white striped cotton with a purple backing because I thought that they looked nice. Originally I was going to also have some ribbons to go up the side as piping and I decided not to use that. We'll look at why in just a couple of minutes. After that I had to find myself a pattern and I actually found a pattern for a pocket from this book. So, this book. And uh, it is from <clears throat> 1825 to 1850. I found it in there. It looked like a relatively easy pattern to follow. It's just a pocket shape. And the original is made out of, I think, wool. And then it had some embroidery on it. I'm not embroidering mine because, hell no. And nobody would want that. So I decided that I would just get the basic shape of the pocket, do the slit, and that would be me. So the first step is to draw the pattern out. And I am a professional. I'm a professional. So I drew my pattern out on the back of an envelope with a Sharpie. And my main concern was A, that it would be at least semi-symmetrical and look decent. And and B, that it would be big enough. So I decided that I would use my hand as a measurement, because I've got like pretty decently sized hands. I can spam like an octave and a bit on a keyboard. So I figured that'll be big enough for a mobile phone and a set of house keys and a, like a, a car key, um, whatever, you, whatever you need to put in it, right? So that's what I did. And I decided I would try and be smart and draw half the pattern and then fold it. Uh, that kind of worked. And the shape that came out looks at least vaguely symmetrical, I think. Uh, so I cut it out, laid it onto my fabric, drew around the fabric very carefully, um, and hey presto, that was the shape of the pocket. Don't do what I did when you make your pocket, which is leave an object with your full home address on it so that any old munchkin could find out where you live on YouTube and then have to blur that out in your editing software. Don't do that. Avoid doing that. Learn from my mistakes. Just realised how rosy my nose is. Look at that. Look at this rosy nosy. I'm not an alcoholic, it's just really cold. It's very cold in Scotland right now. Anywho, where were we? Um, yes, drawing the pattern. Drawing the pattern was fine, it all went very smoothly. Then I had to cut it out and I was vaguely scared, even though this was not the most expensive, like it wasn't like a silk, silk taffeta that I'd spent £25 a metre on or anything, but I wanted it to be nice, so I trimmed it, made sure it was nice and symmetrical, made sure that the lines were all facing in the right direction, all nice and proper and vertical and good, and it seemed to go pretty dang well. Obviously, measuring your pocket using your phone whilst watching one of Rachel Maxey's videos is an essential part of this process, and if you skip this or any part of this step, your pocket will end up f***ed. So, make sure that you are watching Rachel Maxey whilst you make your pocket at this stage, okay? I know it's all going to be hidden underneath skirts, but 
still. You know, I'll know it's there. So the purple is the lining and the back. I forgot initially that I would need to make a bit of a liner for it, so that was fun. Um, but the purple is, again, just a nice plain cotton. It's basically cotton sheeting that I got from my local fabric shop and did exactly the same thing with that, laid it out, laid the outer piece on top to use as a pattern, drew around it with my Sharpie, because I am high class, and then snipped it out and trimmed it to, to size just to make sure that it would absolutely fit. Uh, I didn't want any bulging around any edge of the pocket, so I, I did try and make it as close as possible to the actual outside size of the fabric. I'm kind of used to having that caution in linings where you, you make it a bit bigger and then trim it down. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't want any bulging and any ugly, any ugly bulges or anything like that. I thought about using this purple um, bias binding as a piping on the outside, but I decided that I didn't like the look of it. So what I did instead was I used the bias binding as a pattern to make my own binding, and I did that using the self same fabric as the outside, so it's in this nice black and white striping. Cut it about two and a half times. <sighs> Sorry, I just ate dumplings. Cut it about two and a half times the width of the bias binding that I bought so that I could fold it underneath, stitch it down onto the outside, and then fold it around again, stitch it onto the back, and it would look crisp. So that is the mouth of the pocket, the bit for the mouth of the pocket. All done, all sorted, all looking very tasty, all looking very sharp. And then I made some more for all the way around outside, all the way around the outside edge of the pocket as well. And I goofed a little bit on this and cut it slightly the wrong size and then didn't actually leave myself a long enough strip of the fabric to make a full length new piece of binding. So I cheated ever so slightly and matched up the fabric really, really carefully. Amy, I'm really sorry, please don't look for that. All that's really left now is to sew the darn thing up. So I sewed the darn thing up. And like I said, I don't have sewing machine skills. I'm really bad on a sewing machine, especially with this kind of fine work because I wanted it to have a really tight but narrow seam allowance around the outside so that we weren't digging into the space on the inside of the pocket and taking valuable space away. So I decided to sew it all by hand and what this taught me was I really need to use a thimble more because I thought a couple of layers of cotton would be absolutely fine and my poor middle finger still has a dent in it from where I reversed a needle into it trying to sew through three layers of this because <laughs> a layer of binding and then a layer of liner and then a back layer and then a front layer was too much for my pathetic skin to stand. So wear a thimble if you're sewing stuff. I'm not Bernadette Banner, so I couldn't make this look beautiful. I have neither the face nor the skills that she has to make sewing look attractive, so um, we'll end this footage here, I think, because it's literally just me sat sewing, watching Star Trek. Yeah. Sewing the pocket was very laborious, but uh, not di certainly not difficult. Uh, it involved like I said, just sort of fairly precise sewing. By the end of it, I, I had a pocket and <coughs> it was fine. This is part way through putting the binding on and the binding was the bit of this process that I enjoyed the least because I am impatient and I'm not the neatest worker in the world, but as you can see, it kind of looks like a pocket already. The mouth of the pocket was the bit that was the most stressful because I wanted to match up those stripes so that either side of the mouth the stripes matched. I managed it, and that was simply a case of sort of very fiddly prodding with needles and folding under and holding really tightly as I was sewing so that everything stayed exactly where I wanted it to be. And folding under a piece of bias binding or folding under a piece of homemade tape to keep it in place and making it look neat, who oh boy, that's not something I'm used to. I make very functional Viking Age tunics and, and, and hose. I don't, I don't do the fine stuff very often. I can sew on a piece of braid, but this was a step slightly further. Then the other essential thing you have to do is completely forget to film uh, the rest of the process, including 
putting the tape on. The tape was super easy. I made a double width piece of the stripey fabric, folded it in on itself, folded it in half again so that none of the raw edges were showing, and then whipped down it with a nice little whip stitch. I made it fairly long because I am a gentleman and would never ever dare to ask a lady her waist size for a surprise present, and I figured if I made it about twice as long as it needed to be to go around my waist, it would probably be fine. <laughs> I just, I, I went for it. And then <clears throat> I just literally just sewed it onto the top of the back of the pocket. This is two tapes uh, rather than a single tape. I'm not sure why I made two tapes instead of one big long tape. I have no method to that madness. That's just how it happened. And this is how it looks at the back. It's boiple, and it has little stripies going around the side. I think that the binding worked really well. I think it looks quite neat. I think it looks quite crisp. From the front, I think it looks really, really sweet. It really messes with your head. It makes you go cross-eyed if you stare at it for too long. So do be careful. I think it looks great. I think it's fine. I'm really pleased with how it came out. It's my first ever pocket. I've never made an 18th century pocket before. I'm not going to hurry to make another one, quite frankly. I know loads of people really enjoy these. I know Amy enjoys making them, and you should definitely check out her channel, which is the spectacularly well-named Swimming in a Sea of Estrogen. She's actually got a video on how to make an 18th century pocket that includes some amazing machine embroidery, which you should absolutely go and check out. Amy, I really hope you enjoy your pocket. I did enjoy making it. It was a challenge because it's something that I've never made before, but I consider it a great success. This took me about two days worth of labor in terms of how long it actually took to make the pocket. Lessons learned from this include making sure that if you make your own bias binding or your own, your own uh, piping, you cut out enough. Measure twice, cut once, right? And I didn't, I had to measure twice and then cut and then measure again and then cut again. So measurements are really important. The other thing I think is to not put too much pressure on yourself to be like precious with these things. There are huge numbers of shapes and colours and types and different sorts of pockets, so if yours doesn't look exactly like the one in the pattern book, I don't think that's something that you need to beat yourself up about. I changed the shape of this ever so slightly just because I wanted it to be big enough to hold a mobile phone and accessories and snacks and keys and stuff. You know, I want this to be functional. And I think next time I will probably just by the binding, because making it was fun, and I think it looks really good. I think this looks really good as a binding for this, but buying it would have been so much easier. But hey, I'm really proud of it. Oh, you're wondering who gave me a pocket in the pocket swap, are you? Well, and then let me tell you who made my pocket for. So my pocket was made for me by the wonderful Claude of Retro Claude, and it is superb. It is made all from natural fibers, which I really appreciate. <clears throat> and we have some delicious cottons, and we've got wonderful lined little pocket here for my bits and my pieces. Ooh, what have we got in here right now? Right now in here, we've got a little strappy strap. I have a <clears throat> custom embroidery on the bottom, which says, this pocket kills fascists. Hell yeah. The back has this amazing green on sort of natural coloured houndstooth wool, which I love, I love it. And it has a purple binding. And green and purple with red is like one of my, my favourite luxury colour combinations. And can we talk about the magnetic... Can we talk about the magnetic pincushion for a second? Because this, this is a stroke of genius. I love this. I, I even love the magnet base there has this wonderful hexagonal bit stitched on it. Nope. Yes, yes. Success. And it's adjustable. It's adjustable. You can wear it as, as a, a waist tape or you can wear it as a, a stylish shoulder bag, which I think looks rather nice. I think it goes with my Cardi rather well, don't you? Don't you think? Don't you think that's stylish? Look how stylish I am. Look how stylish this is. It's fabulous. You could just wear this as a man bag. I could just wear this out. I might just start wearing this out. Anyway, I think it's fabulous. Thank you, Claude. You should go check out Claude's work. She has a fantastic Instagram channel. 
uh, Instagram profile and a great channel, and she does amazing work. So, Claude, I love my pocket. Thank you so much for my pocket. Amy, I hope you like your pocket. I filled it with British snacks <laughs> so that I could spread the love. There's some British chocolates in there, because apparently British chocolate is completely different to American chocolate. I didn't know that until I went there and I tried it, but our chocolate is, is, is totally different. It all tastes absolutely different to American chocolates. And um, honestly, I would be into trying more chocolates from all over different parts of the world. If, you know, I'm not telling you to send me chocolates to my P.O. box, but, you know, if you're ever thinking of something to send me, sweets never go amiss. Neither does tea. You know, I've got so much tea now from you guys. Thank you so much for all the tea. I really appreciate it. There you go, an 18th century pocket made by me, and it doesn't suck. And I think it is functionally a pocket. <laughs> if it ends up not being, I apologise. But there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed me desperately trying to explain how to sew an 18th century pocket, which is a subject I know nothing about. And if you guys make pockets and are inspired by this, feel free to tag me. <laughs> in them, and I'll shout encouragement at you on the internet. So, thank you so much once again for joining, and until the next time, who will am a troll. Bye for now. <laughs> genuinely just fall asleep like this. That's really bad. Oh, man. Oh, no. No, this is too real. Ah, huh.